Chapter nine, calm before the storm. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel it's been pretty stormy up to this point. Uh, I hope you mean eye of the storm. <laughs> hey, I'm back. Man, I was not expecting after how that last chapter ended. I was for sure like, well, I'm gonna die out here now. You are so lucky we found you as quickly as we did. Here, coffee. Straight from the murder. Thanks, old boo. I'm glad I can always count on you for coffee. I reached a hand out from the blanket around my shoulders, quickly pulling the cup back to where it was warm. Th thanks Still cold. I nodded as I wrapped my hands around the paper cup, trying to hold it as close as possible to absorb some of the warmth. Allie was standing quietly behind me, toweling my hair dry. My stupidly long hair, which was frizzing to eternity as we spoke. Oh right, it was raining. I'm like, why am I wet? I was cold, still damp. And I'd spent the better part of the evening wandering around in the woods, completely freaked out and trying to piece together my choppy memories, but I was safe and feeling a little better. And back in the club room, I was finally able to remember everything that had been happening the past few weeks. Huzzah! I shot a weary smile to William, who was sitting next to me, hands balled up on his lap. I still haven't thanked you, William. That's right! Without him, there's no way we'd have found you so fast. You don't have to thank me for that. I'm just glad I was able to locate you from here. He was still confined to the club room, but I had to admit I was more and more impressed with his psychic abilities. Even from here, he was able to sense and tell them my direction. Damn, boy is powerful. So you still don't remember anything between losing consciousness here and waking up in the woods? I shook my head, taking a careful sip of the hot coffee. No. I think that most everything else has come back. At first, everything was kind of a jumble. I had plenty of time to work everything out by the time you guys found me. I've never been so glad to see anyone in my life. And for once, I didn't have, you know, antagonist number 32 out in the woods looking for me at the same time and like, yo, hey, I'm your friend, or hey, I'm your boyfriend. <laughs> now that that's shenanigans for a change. I'm just really glad we found you. It's so weird. I have this vague memory of someone singing, and then I was just standing in the woods stupidly yelling hello as if someone was going to answer. At least you're safe now. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, two is certainly apt. I still have so many questions I need answers to. Like what? Like why all this happened in the first place. It's all good and well to say I'm back and the contract was broken. And I get why the contract happened, though I still think it's pretty awful to take advantage of kids. But why go to all the trouble with the soul swapping instead of just kidnapping me like normal people? Not that I wanted to be kidnapped at all, but sheesh. Fairies were weird. And... not just that. I mean, Spencer and I were able to see fairies our whole lives, I think. Had they always been targeting, targeting us even before he went in the fairy hill? That fairy, Rule, she hinted that might be the case. Which is why now that you're back, you really should be careful about poking into fey affairs. They took you once. They might be tempted to do it again if you give them the chance. I don't want to make myself a target. I'm just confused. Kaya did at least tell us that the soul swapping is because they use the victim's soul as camouflage, so they can more easily pass for human. A lot of changelings were murdered in the past once they were discovered, and the children they kidnapped would have to be sent back. It's a more complex process, but it has a higher chance of success. Keeping your soul here also keeps your life force from being diminished by spending all those years in fairy. Ugh. 
Yeah, wasn't thrilled with finding out I may have been mutated by all that fairy magic. Man, I feel like I need to write a book about this stuff. If all this soul-swapping nonsense had been in some of the books we read... Spilling their secrets in writing is a surefire way to rile them up again. And I mean it when I say you shouldn't poke in any further. Humans who poke themselves too far into the supernatural tend to meet with ill fates. I shot him a curious look. That was a strange thing coming from him. He was pretty much completely immersed in this stuff. You're safe again. That's what matters. I feel weirdly normal for having gone through a couple of body transfers, and apparently having been mutated by fairy magic over the last few years. Your hair is really long now, though. That at least is some kind of evidence that something weird happened. Guess the Fae weren't much for giving haircuts. Could be worse. It could be trailing the ground. If it was that long, you guys might have found me swinging through the trees with it. <laughs> I rubbed my head and sighed softly. <sighs> Are you okay? Yeah. I shot him what I hoped was a confident smile. I still just have a bit of head fog. It's to be expected. You just went through a pretty serious ordeal. Miasma infection, sudden body swapping, being transported through space-time by fairies. Yeah, when you put it like that, it sounds pretty weird. What, um... What happened with that thing, anyway? The drudge thingy. Is it really safe here? I kind of blacked out toward the end of that fight. I just remember it hitting me. Then I hit William. Then we both hit the wall. Yeah, I shut it right after that and it was gone, so... It vanished on a... Yeah, okay, I'm like, wait, did that, is that the right point? I thought Corbin was talking for a second. Hold on. It vanished on its own after it attacked you. It must have been... tired. Mm-hmm. William, what did you do to the drudge? After the confrontation with that mass spirit, I mean. I shot him another look, suddenly remembering that he'd called that mass ghost his mother. I didn't feel I could ask about that with everyone here, though. Yeah, Vila shut up right after the Fae departed. Rule. Rule? It's the fairy's name. I remember at least that much about her. Ah, well... After she left, Velo showed up. William had to catch them up on everything that happened. Since we already had a good idea of where you were, thanks to William, he stayed and amplified the barrier on the club room. Combined with what Shelley, Corbin, and I had previously done, it's pretty good now. Yes, it would be very difficult for something to successfully attack from the outside now. They also double the agents guarding the mines, so hopefully nothing will sneak past this time. That's good to know. There hasn't been any further sign of it since you two encountered it in the hall. They're hoping it's either given up for this year, or... Maybe that fight with the mass ghost expended enough energy that it retreated. I hope so, too. Well, I think I'm going to head out now. It's stupidly late. Or early, rather. And I have a pretty big day of running around yelling at cryptics to stop causing trouble, so... Yeah, yeah. Go. Sleep. Thanks for finding me before there were search parties and news articles this time. And saving me from the evil thing attacking the club room. And healing me so my soul didn't necrotize. And getting my real body back. You know, all that. No problem! All in a day's work. Yeah, that last part is kind of what scares me. This stuff doesn't really just happen all the time, does it? Not all the time. Like, once a month or something. <laughs> they said goodbye and left quickly. It all felt rather... anticlimactic.
All in a day's work, eh? Well, boy, I feel like we need to talk again. <laughs> I fell back against the sofa, pulling my knees up into the blanket. William was still sitting next to me, his back straight and expression serious. Can I ask you something now that the others are gone? We didn't get a chance to talk about this before. Y yes. When you saw that masked ghost, you said it was your mother. He gave me a quick look, then looked away ag again. I saw his teeth flash out over his lip. I think it was. Even if I couldn't see her face, the feeling was the same. We haven't had time to look for her because of what happened to you. But Gus thinks she'll resurface tomorrow since there will be so many more haunts to target. So it really was her. I mean, it makes sense why she's killing ghosts then, since she's, uh, not exactly had good fluffy feelings towards them her entire life. I didn't know what to say to that. How did you respond to someone telling you their mother had become a ghost? Not even just a ghost, but some kind of vengeful spirit. At least it makes sense why she protected William and why she protected Nora. Because if William's aura rubbed off on Nora, then William's mother would have detected Nora as being William. So in a way, she did care about her son because she's trying to protect him from ghosts. It's messed up as it is that she like killed his entire chorus and stuff, but... I mean, in a way, that was probably a good thing, because some of those uh, ghosts in the chorus were definitely not so great. Even if she unintentionally now left him open to attack from the ancient. What a... what a pickle. <laughs> good grief. At least now we can understand the motives for attacking the spirits. She hated spirits. She must still hate them. I imagine she wants to see them gone forever. I just don't know why she'd come all the way to Pine Hollow to kill the ones here. There were so many at the, that hospital. How's a ghost born? Does it happen at the time of death? Is it where she was when she was buried? Did she travel from there to here because her son is here? Yeah, I'm like, if I do this, is this Nora being like, maybe she's here for you? Save her son. Maybe you're misunderstanding what she was doing. What? What do you mean? Well, she came all the way to Pine Hollow to clear out haunts. And she cleared out your chorus. She even tried to take on that ancient drudge thingy. A peculiar look flashed over his face, and he quickly looked away. I imagine that wasn't something he wanted to talk about. My point is, maybe she's not just taking out some grudge on spirits. Maybe she's protecting you. Or trying to, in her own way. That's my girl! He seemed surprised by the very possibility. Do you... do you think that's true? I think some of her actions don't make sense unless you look at it through that lens. I mean, why did she help me get out of that storage closet? Why was she even around to do it? It was like she was watching and immediately jumped in to help. And she only has one reason to help me. Because of you. Because of me? But she... I thought Spencer hated me, too. But in the end, we just misunderstood each other. I'm sure her feelings for you are more complicated than you realize. She's your mother. I really don't think she could hate you that easily. But still, to help me by attacking others, I don't want her to do something like that. Maybe you can help her after this is all over. I... 
I don't know if I'll be able to. You can worry about that later. For now, you should just try to rest. It's been a really, really long day. Man, how bizarro would it be, though, if he was able to, like, repair things with his mom now that she's dead and a ghost? <laughs> it's like, ah, now we can finally understand each other. <laughs> Oof, William. I'm so sorry, man. At least for now, we know the club is safe. And, hey, I'm not dying, so that's good. Yeah. And I got my body back? We sat in silence for a moment, shoulders touching slightly. I listened to the soft hum of the mini-fridge, trying to really get my head around everything that had happened. It's so weird. This one part of my mind sort of breathing a sigh of relief and thinking, it's all over now. And the other part of me is wondering what the heck that even means. Nothing is over. I'm still surrounded by paranormal things. One little issue was resolved, but I still have to live in this world. A world where children get taken away without even realizing it. Where they get their vision stolen by angry fairies. And scary things sleep in mines waiting to feed on anyone who gets too close. I rested my hands on my knees, twisting my fingers together. It doesn't feel like anything has really changed, except that I guess I don't have to worry about sleepwalking anymore. Well, it's not the end yet, you know. Yeah. That just means things have a chance to get even worse. <laughs> That's the way it works in a tragedy, right? You think it's as bad as it gets, and then it gets worse. It does... happen that way sometimes. What will you do now? Well, I want to find a way to help Spencer. See if I can undo whatever they did to his eye. I guess that's my next big project. Nora, there's something I need to... He stopped suddenly, leaving off whatever he'd been planning to say. He looked away again. Well, William, you can't start a sentence with that and be like, uh, n never mind... Eh, pretend you didn't hear any of that. William, you still need to explain the wolf in sheep's clothing, please. I'm still worried about that. N never mind. He stood and straightened the pillows. You should sleep. It's been a hard few days. I'm sure you can use the rest. Yeah. I just don't know if I can sleep. There are so many thoughts flying around my head. Though, I guess I should be grateful it's really my head now. I'll be here with you the whole time. You're not going to sleep? I will. Don't worry about me. After all, like everyone said, there's no way we'll be attacked from the outside anymore. I hate that you've said that twice now. It's like, very... <laughs> Specific. It's not like, there's no way we're going to be attacked. It's like, from the outside. Not from the outside. Anything outside? It's fine. But on the inside. Shh. I, I'm like, William, is there something in here that I should know about? Or in you? That's about to attack in this calm before the storm. You're making me nervous. Yeah. I curled up on the sofa where I'd slept the previous night. It had been a really, really, really long day. William was probably tired, just like I was. He flicked the light off and I pulled a pillow closer, closing my eyes. I just wanted the stupid holiday to be over so I could go home. Oh no, triple dots. I wasn't sure how much time had passed when I woke up. It wasn't the slow stumbling into wakefulness I'd been doing the last few weeks with the sleepwalking. I was just suddenly awake staring at the ceiling. What is that noise? I don't hear it yet. I'd been hearing it in my dream, too. 
I struggled up to my elbows, looking around the room blearily. William? What's he doing over there? I could see his form huddled a few feet away. He was rocking slightly and crying? Was he crying? I bolted upright, throwing the blanket off. William! William, are you okay? Oh god, what are you gonna see when you turn him around? I grabbed his shoulder and turned him toward me. Ah! Oh god, I knew that something wasn't right! Ah! Oh! No! No! Oh no! What is... What happened to you? This is why you don't specify from outside! Uh, unless that was your subtle way of telling me, yo, there's something wrong inside. Ah! Great. Help me. When I saw his face, I let out a strangled cry. Yeah, uh, I, I did that like a few seconds ago. I jolted awake, the scream catching in my throat. Um... So was that a dream? What? Hi. Uh, thank you for a CG. You look beautiful without black goo coming out your eyeballs. William leaned over me worriedly. W William? You were having a bad dream. Are you okay? It... It seemed pretty bad. Yeah. Ugh. That was awful. I started to sit up but realized he had me pinned down. Okay. I stared up at him worriedly. William! What, what's happening? W William? making me scream Ugh. I can't even look at you right now I can't oh, gosh I'm, I'm not I refuse to look at you right now what's it about me oh, god I hate freaking double dream double freaking nightmare ah oh, sheesh I got goose don't ah if you triple <laughs> if you triple jump scare me I'm out I'm out! Ugh. Great. I'm definitely not gonna have nightmares about that tonight. <laughs> With a cry, I jolted awake. For real this time! I was sitting up in the club room. The light immediately came on, and I squinted toward the door where Allie was. Oh, thank God it's you. Good morning! Ugh. You okay? You seemed like you were having a bad dream. I was about to wake you up. Don't you dare have goo come out of your eyes. Just, that's all I need to, that's all I want to say. Just, as long as you don't do that, everything's copacetic. Yeah. I sat up with a soft groan, rubbing my head. Uh, what time is it? I thought you were going to be busy today. It's nearly 3 p.m. I have been busy. I slept nearly the whole day? Well, you went through a lot. I'm sure you needed to recuperate. I realized Allie and I were the only ones in the club. Hmm, hmm. Where's William? He went to the library earlier. He's been cooped up for days. Probably just needed a change of scenery. Yeah. Ugh. Those dreams. I don't know if those were dreams or like leftovers from Rule being like, yo, there's something in that boy. I just want to tell you, girl, you look out. <sighs> I guess that was just all the stress of the last few days catching up to me. But those were damn creepy. I was still feeling a little gross and unnerved by them. <laughs> so how are things? 
How are things with you, girl? Ugh. So, how are things? Well, things are going pretty smoothly for now. It'll all kick off after sunset, though. There'll be a huge burst of magic overflow and a spike in paranormal activity throughout the town. But so far, nothing new on the ancient front, so that's good. Yeah, because it's in William now. She joined me on the sofa. How are you holding up? Aside from nightmares. I'm fine. The nightmares hadn't even been about me. I mean... Everything feels the same as it did before, really. Doesn't feel like I've been through a life-changing... thing. You know? I definitely know. It's kind of weird how life just kind of keeps going even when you think it should stop long enough to properly take stock. Anyway, I think Spencer's going to pop over and say hi. He was slightly ticked we didn't tell him about the whole bit where you nearly died. Yeah, I can see how that might have frustrated him. Well, he's going to be here soon to yell and demand explanations. Fun. Are you at least going to stay and help me deal with it? Sorry, can't. I was just stopping by for a bit and I have to run again soon. Traitor. Sorry, the agency has my loyalty for today. Hopefully William at least will have my back. I wasn't so sure, though. He'd been kind of weird yesterday, and now he was nowhere to be found. Allie didn't stay much longer than that, and William didn't return. And in fact, he didn't show up before Spencer did at all. I popped my head in the library once, and he was nowhere to be seen. Yeah. Well, hopefully he didn't kill Velos and Gus. After Spencer arrived, I was busy explaining everything from the attack to the healing, body swapping, and everything else. Not to mention having a weird discussion with myself in my head to explaining it wasn't really myself I was arguing with. By the end of it, Spencer was just slouched on the sofa with his arms over his chest scowling. I should have known that scoff-wearing idiot was up to something when he insisted I look tired and should go home. <laughs> You fell for that, huh? You really should have. Corvin looks like he couldn't lie his way out of a paper bag. I can't believe you went along with it when he insisted you leave. I really, really just wanted him to finally stop talking. Yeah, I can see that. He sneaked a sidelong look at me, expression dark. Are you... I mean... Are things really okay now? Well, I think so. I don't really know how to gauge okay anymore. I don't feel any different, but everyone assures me I'm no longer the fairy equivalent of mismatched socks. My soul and body match up again. And that feeling of someone else being with me is definitely gone now. So I guess that part is okay. I mean, I've nearly died, like, twice now. And some kind of evil, all-powerful being of doom still wants to eat me because it thinks I'm William. Apparently. So that's still a problem. I always knew this town was strange. I had no idea it was this strange, though. Tell me about it. Where, um... Where do things go from here? I don't know. I guess we just... Move on. I mean... I want to try to figure out how to reverse what they did to your eye. I guess that's my next project. Hey. Um... Please do not tell me you have another crazy revelation, because I can't handle it. I'm... Sorry. Oh! That was almost as shocking as any revelation he could have thrown at me. For real. For what? I just... For the last five years, I've been pretty terrible. Well, you thought an imposter was lurking in your house with you. And you weren't totally wrong. I know. I just wish... I wish I could have found the truth sooner. Same. I feel like we lost a lot of time, kind of... Hating each other, you know? 
William... William and his mom were kind of the same. Misunderstanding each other or hurting each other. And she's gone now. He may never have the chance to fix things. I'm glad we had the chance. Me too. This is the most wholesome sibling moment in the entire game, and I'm loving all of it. Thank you, Spencer. I needed that after the nightmare fuel that started this episode. We sat there in awkward silence for a few minutes. So, when do they say you can leave this place? I don't know. Tomorrow, I guess? Maybe Tuesday? I think they said that after the overflow, the dredge will run out of power and dissipate. Though they haven't seen it since the epic showdown in the hallway, so... I don't know. He gave me a long, worried look. Yeah, it's kind of inside William. Ali said the fairies were going to use you as breeding stock. Well, apparently they were going to use you until I saved your troublemaking butt from that fairy hill. He laughed softly. Ah, You too. <laughs> you were always doing that when we were kids. Rescuing you from fairies? Pretty sure I only did that once. I meant just... getting me out of trouble. Mom and Dad must have been seriously confused when I went from being the responsible one to the troublemaker. Disappearing, fighting with you all the time. Speaking of that... After Ali told me about the Fairy Hill, I went looking around the house. For any evidence of it. I mean, even if Mom and Dad never said anything about me going missing, I knew Mom had to have some clippings from it or something. She kept all that stuff about you going missing, so if something happened with me, I knew there was something. Somewhere. That's true. I found this. He handed me a torn, faded bit of newspaper. Missing boy found by sister. By L. Nichols of the Pine Hollow Curia. In a strange twist, the young boy missing for three days was found in the woods by his older sister. The girl, only a few minutes older than the boy, strayed away from her caretaker late Sunday morning. Friends of the family said she had been begging to join the search parties to locate her missing twin, but was being looked after by her grandmother. By evening, both children were back in custody. Neither child had any injuries. Police remain uncertain where the boy spent the last three days and how his sister managed to find him. The boy had no signs of hypothermia, despite the cold weather this last... winter? There were also no signs of dehydration, and he appears to have been... something with a C for during his absence. In spite of this, he insists he was alone the entire time, and his sister reported there was no one around when she found him. Police continue to search for clues as to what exactly happened, but say the children's memories of the events leading to the rescue seem fuzzy, as neither child seems able to recall exactly how or where the body was found. For the time being, the boy has been released to his parents and is recovering. Please see Courier 8B. I looked over the story curiously. A brief telling of how I found him in the woods and got him home. The article was far too short for the weight of what really happened that day. I felt strange reading over it. This was how normal people saw and dismissed the strange things happening right under their noses. A strange twist. It's still amazing they kept it from us for so many years. Well, it helped that we had our memories altered and hidden away. No doubt. It's all behind us now. I hope so. I really, really hope so. Spencer and I chatted a while longer. Moving on sounded great, but actually doing it was... strange. It felt like things were unfinished somehow. Like they weren't wrapped up properly, just left behind as we did the whole moving on thing. But I didn't know what wrapping up being a changeling meant, or what finding closure for that really felt like anyway. 
When Spencer went home that afternoon, William still hadn't emerged from the library, and I wasn't sure whether I should interrupt him. It seemed like he also had a lot on his mind. Under the circumstances, I couldn't blame him. I didn't know what to say, and it felt like maybe both of us needed some space to get our heads around all the recent events. When I went to sleep that night, he was still in there. Oh god, please, no more nightmares. Oh hey, I'm back home! Huzzur. Nora, honey, we're getting ready to leave. Coming! I tossed the damp towel on my bed and hurried downstairs. So it's after Samhain. So we should be good, right? Tell Grandpa we love him, and we hope he gets better soon. Of course I will. If he gets worse, I want you to let us come see him. He's not going to get worse. That's why they're sending him to a bigger hospital. Courtney, come on. We need to get going. Will you two be okay without us? We'll be fine. You two should go. The plan had actually been for me to spend Monday at the school to give time for the magic overflow from Samhain to completely die off, but unfor unfortunately I'd gotten a call that morning from Mom telling me to come home. Grandpa had some kind of episode and was going to require hospitalization. Mom and Dad were going down to stay with him, and they wanted me home with Spencer. It was hard to come up with a reason for me to stay away. Fortunately, Guess and Velos had deemed it safe for me to return home. The remnants of William's energy had faded quite a lot due to the whole body switch, and the bit still attached to my aura faded even more since he'd been keeping his distance. Mm -hmm. They were pretty sure that as long as I stayed inside, I'd be fine this time. Because, you know, that worked out great when the ghost came into my freaking bedroom. But, I digress. I felt a little leery leaving the sanctity of the club room, but it was good to be back. Spencer and I stood on the front porch and watched Mom and Dad drive off. I hope Grandpa's okay. I'm sure he will be. He leaned against one of the posts, staring after them until the car vanished down the street. Mom has been practically giddy, seeing as how we're finally getting along again. I noticed. I'm sure she's just relieved. All the fighting was probably getting on her nerves. I still feel like I need to apologize. For everything. The more I think about it, the more I realize it was all my fault in the first place. Aww. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad to hear you're sorry. <laughs> I don't like how that's worded. It's like, that's great. I'm, I'm really glad. I'm really glad to hear that. There was, there was stuff on both sides, but man, Spencer, gotta say, really appreciate you like continuing to apologize for five years of crap. You don't have to apologize. We've been through this. I can't imagine what it was like living with me all this time, considering she was also with me. Even if you didn't have all the details, you knew there was someone just hiding out and pretending to be one of the family. Yeah. I wish we could have talked about it, but... When I think about it, there was no way we could have. In the end, we both played our parts the only way we could have. Like a proper tragedy. Yeah, the tragedy theme keeps popping up. Except we didn't have a sad ending. It's not the end of the route yet, girl. Hold your horses. Yeah. We headed inside contemplating pizza for dinner, and ultimately spent the evening rehashing everything we could remember from when we were kids or from the last five years. All the things leading up to now. It seemed like we really did have a lot of strange experiences when we were little. But we were kids. We kind of accepted them without question. Looking back, though, there were so many things. Like the lady in green who we used to encounter in the woods, or the voices we'd hear singing. And the old man that lived in Grandma's apple tree. There was a lot that we'd both forgotten about. It was weird sleeping in my own bed after being gone a few days. Especially after what had happened during my last night in this room. 
But my window was fixed by a friend of Dad's over the, win the weekend, thankfully, and everything felt normal. Heck, even hearing that weird chattering in my closet felt normal by now. But just to be on the safe side... I slept in my clothes and left the closet light on. I woke up with a start. Just normal waking up. No sleepwalking, no standing in the middle of the room, no stinging feet from the herbs. I sat up looking around, just in case. Ah, paranoia. But my room was empty. Everything was quiet. And I was properly snuggled into my blankets. I stood and padded to the door, looking out into the dark hall before I went quietly downstairs to the kitchen. I wasn't really thirsty, but for some reason I felt... antsy. Maybe I just come to associate waking up at night with bad things. I got a glass from the cabinet and filled it, taking a sip as I leaned against the counter. I heard Spencer's footsteps on the stairs before I saw him. He stepped into the dim light, eyeing me cautiously. Understandable. What are you doing? I gave him a weary smile. Don't worry, just getting a glass of water. No sleepwalking or sneaking outside, I promise. Is everything okay? Yeah, I think my brain's just adjusted itself to waking itself up at weird hours of the night. I'm heading back up soon. Okay. Won't question why you're fully dressed with your jacket on, sister, I guess. He vanished back upstairs again. I dumped the rest of the water out and set the glass in the sink before heading back upstairs. Before going back to bed, I paused to peek out my window. And there was a creepy William staring back. Okay, Will of the Wisps, that's fine. Whoa, what's that? The front yard was full of softly glowing lights. They were so beautiful and eerie. Will of the Wisps, maybe? A cold shiver crept up my spine. Fairy lights. Whatever they were, I really didn't want anything to do with them. I pulled the curtain shut and crawled back in bed. I was done with fairy things, at least for now. I closed my eyes, thinking back to that first incident with the Spriggan, and what Brenna said. We must not look at goblin men. We must not buy their fruits. I didn't know if Will-o'-the-Wisp counted as goblin men exactly, but maybe if I just didn't look at them, they'd go away. It would be really nice if everything else worked that way, too. For the first time in a while, I dropped off easily and was soon fast asleep again. Hopefully, things would only start getting better from here. <laughs>